this class, the next class that I did, this guy's pretty advanced. He's been studying English all of his life. So the area that I felt like he could improve the most was his pronunciation. So for this class, all we did was focus on pronunciation. We read an article with advanced, this was from an advanced English book with advanced vocabulary. Uh, so there might be some vocabulary to learn here. I don't remember, but mostly the, the purpose of this was to work on pronunciation. So we will work on pronunciation here. So, uh, so these are, these are sentences taken from the article that we were reading. And the first sentence is the outsourcing of production costs to low wage countries. Okay. That's our phrase. And I've been kind of obsessed with the length of vowel sounds recently, because I've noticed that this is, if you pay attention to the length of the vowel sound in the word, it can improve your pronunciation like magic. It's been really effective. And so I've been pushing that a lot in my classes recently. But before we start doing that, before we start analyzing the length of vowel sounds, uh, I noticed a problem. Because this first word, this first phrase, the outsourcing, shows us a problem. Now I've got two words written here. We've got number one and number two. You can, if you're looking at the screen, you can see number one and number two. Listen to me say number one, and then listen to me say number two, but pay attention to the word the. Do they sound the same in these two words? The car, the apple, the car, the apple. They sound very different. When a word starts with a vowel sound, the changes to the. So the, that's a very short sound, the. But, but when, when a word starts with a vowel sound, it becomes very long. It becomes e, the apple, the car, the apple. Can you hear that? The, uh, is very short. And the, it's very long and big. The apple, the car. Okay, uh, so that was our first issue because when you say uh, outsourcing, and you put the word the in front of it, how does that sound? Can you do that? The outsourcing. The outsourcing. The outsourcing of production costs to low-wage countries. Now let's take a look at this phrase, low-wage. If you don't know, wage means pay, how much people make. So low wage means people don't make very much money. Low pay. If we look at that word low, what do you think about the vowel sound? Is that a long vowel sound or is that a short vowel sound? We're talking about duration. Low. That's really long. Actually, it's at least two sounds. Low. So that's two vowel sounds together. It most it should be long. Low. And you have to give a kiss when you do it. See, watch my lips. Low. See, I'm giving a kiss. Low. Low. And then we have another uh, we have another word, wage. And the beginning of that word is all vowel sounds. Wage. That's three vowel sounds. Wage, wage. So when you think about it, if you say that phrase, it's all vowel sounds in the middle. Low wage, low wage, low wage. Most people, if they're learning English and uh, they try to say that, they make it very short and it becomes extremely hard to understand. Low wage. You have to take your time and you have to say, or you have to try to say all of those sounds. 
Low wage. I wish I could hear you speaking to see if you're if you're practicing this with me. I would love to hear it. But unfortunately, I can't hear you. Okay, so let's move to the next phrase and let's take a look at uh, the, the length of the vowel sounds in the phrase. The next phrase is does not just reduce costs. All right, now we have does not, does not, does not. So those are two words, two vowel sounds. What do you think? Short, short, long, 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 short. What do you think? I think it's long, short, does not, does not, does not. It's not, uh, it's possible to say does not, does not. But I think it would be better if you said does not, if you take your time and make that does pretty long. Does not. Not is okay. You can just say not. <laughs> That's very normal. Does not. Does not. What do you think about the next word? Just. Just. Do you think that's long or short? I think it's long. I think that's long. Just. I imagine my dog is, is trying to make a little bed for himself. He's scratching on the rug. Just. Just. I think, you know, if you try to say that quickly, just. 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 It doesn't sound, it, especially if you're putting it with other words, it doesn't sound very clear. Just. Does not just. Can you hear that? That's, that's long, short, long. Does not just. Does not just. Does not just. Let's take a look at the next word. Reduce. Reduce. Two vowel sounds. What do you think about the duration of them? Are they long? Are they short? Reduce. I think it's short, long. Short, long. Reduce. Reduce. Does not just reduce. Does not just reduce. Try to say the phrase but pay attention to the length of the vowel sounds. Does not just reduce. Now let's look at the next word, which is costs. Costs. What do you think about that vowel sound? Is that short? Is that costs? Or is it costs? It's very big. It's very, it's several sounds. Let's see, it's koa. It's it's three sounds. Koa. Costs. It's maybe more than three. Costs. It's very big. It's a very big sound. And if you try to put a little sound in there, costs, that could be very difficult for people to understand. Costs. Let's try to say the whole phrase paying very close attention to the length of the vowel sound. Does not, does not just reduce costs. Does not just reduce costs. Does not just reduce costs. See, a lot of people, uh, in a lot of languages, the vowel sound is very small. And they would say, like, uh, does not just reduce costs. And it's very hard to understand it. If you make them all short, you have to pay attention to which sounds are long in duration. Does not just reduce costs. And then it sounds very beautiful. Really, if you pay attention to this, uh, you'll be amazed. It's like magic. Okay. Now we have, uh, you know, we had the word outsource. And... Uh, let's see. Well, let's just say the word source. I don't remember our conversation <laughs> that we had while we were doing this. So let's let's listen to the listen to me say this word source very slowly. Source. That's oh. There's even an uh at the end. Source. Source. If you try to say this with a small sound. Source. It's hard to understand that word. Source. It's not source. It's 
Soars. Or. Soars. 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 Okay, now this person, he was from Spain. And uh, it's very hard for Spanish people uh, to... Because you know, they have a letter Z and they have an S, but they pronounce it very differently in Spain. And uh, we were talking about the word just, and he said, oh, that sounds like the music. And I said, oh, jazz? He said, yeah. Oh, but there's so many differences between the word just and the word jazz. Maybe not to the Spanish ear, but to my ear. So let's look at the difference between the word just and jazz. Now, uh, notice the way that I'm spelling just in the parentheses is like A-H. Because you say A, but then you have to push out some air also, which is the H. Just. <laughs> that's a funny exaggeration. Just. <laughs> but, but, but that's really what you have to do. Maybe not so strongly. So, just, just. It's kind of short, but you still push out air. Oh, well, let's say it's long. Just. Also, uh, in that S, which in Spain sounds like sh, so, so he would say just like that. But uh, so I was telling him, no, you have to sound like a snake. You have to be a snake. A snake says that's that's the sound of a snake so so you have to sound like a snake when you do it just like a snake just okay so now the vowel sound in number two is extremely different from the vowel sound in number one and I can only give you the North American pronunciation the American pronunciation uh, if you go to the UK or Australia, this is uh, one letter that will sound very different from the way that I pronounce it. So in the United States, this vowel sound, which is very long, is a a a a jazz, jazz, a a so number one is uh, and number two is a a a a a a jazz. And the final sound at the end of that word is the sound of an insect, an insect like a bee or a mosquito. Zzz. The final sound of number one is a snake. Zzz. But the final sound of number two is an insect. Zzz, like a bee or a mosquito. So number two is jazz. Jazz. And number one is just. Just. Just like a snake. So here's number one. Just. Number two. Jazz. Can you see they're very different, but to some people, especially people learning English, maybe they would be confused between those two words. They sound similar to people learning English, but not to people who speak English every day. Okay. Now let's look at another phrase from the article and analyze the vowel sounds. It can also reduce the quality. It can also reduce the quality. It can. It can. Now, it's funny because the word can, let me say the word can, isolated. Can. That's actually the same word as in jazz. That's the funny a -ya sound. E -i -a. E -ya. E -ya. E -e -i -a. e e e can. So it's long. But it's such a common word that in conversation, when people are talking, it becomes very short. Can. Can. It sounds like can. It can. It can. 
it can, if you say it slowly and you're very careful, it sounds like this. It can. It can. It can. But when people are talking, it sounds like this. It can. It can. It can. Very short. So some of these words are flexible. Sometimes they're long and sometimes they're short. Usually very common words, if, if they're pronounced long, they become short in conversation because it's easier to talk that way. It can, but let's say it conversationally. It can, it can, it can. Now let's look at the next word. Also, 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 all, also. Uh, that first letter is tricky. I'm really, I think because of the L, it becomes kind of long because it's hard to pronounce an L unless you pronounce some kind of vowel sound in front of it, like ooh. I think uh, it sounds like oh, like a W. Oh, oh, also. Okay, so it should be short, but because of the L, it's long. Oh, also. What about so? So. So. That's actually two sounds. So, so, so it must be long. So this word, this very common word, is long, long. Also, also. It can also, it can, it can also. You hear the length of those? Short, short, long, long. Short, short, long, long. It can also, it can also reduce. 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 What do you think about that word? Reduce. I think that when people are saying it most of the time, it's short, long. Short, long. Reduce. Reduce. It is possible to say reduce. That's possible. But most of the time, I think people would say reduce. Short, long. Let's try to say all of the phrase so far. It can also reduce. It can also reduce. Short, short, long, long, short, long. <laughs> it can also reduce. And then we have the. That's very short. The. It can also reduce the. It can also reduce the. It can also reduce the quality. Qual. Qual. That's obviously long. Qual. Qual. Don't try to make that short. That must be long. Qual. There's a lot of sounds. Wow. It's like wow. Qual. Quale. What about le? Is that long or short? Le. Quale. Quale. That's short. Quale. Long short. Long short. Quale. Quality. 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 In North America, T's sometimes sound like D's. Quality. That D is long. So that's that's long, short, long. Quality. Quality. Let's try to say the entire phrase. It can, it can also, it can also reduce, it can also reduce the, it can also reduce the quality. It can also reduce the quality. It can also reduce the quality. I promise you, if you pay attention to this, your pronunciation will improve like magic. Now let's look at the next phrase. Of the goods produced. Of the. Of the. What do you think about that? Are those long sounds or short sounds? Of the. Of the. Those are short. Short, short. Short, short. Of the. Of the. What about the next word? Goods. Goods. This is another one of these H situations where at the end you have to push out some air. Good. Goods. Goods. There's air coming out at the end. So it's kind of like UH. Ugh. Goods. And I think that's long. Goods. Of the goods. Of the goods. Short, short, long of the goods. Let's take a look at the final word.
produced, produced. That's short long, short long, produced, produced, short long, short long, produced, of the goods produced, of the goods produced. Okay, and then we got into a conversation because, and I think I've actually done this in another video, but it doesn't hurt to repeat it. Uh, if you say number one, if you can see on the screen, we've got number one, to produce, that's a verb. And you can see the pronunciation in the parentheses, produce, produce, short, long. Uh, that is, that means like manufacture or make something. But if you pronounce it like number two, which is a noun, number one is a verb, number two is a noun, if you make both of the uh, syllables long, produce, produce, that is a noun, and that means vegetables and fruits, things you grow. So uh, if you go to the grocery store and you say, where is the produce section? They will direct you to the place where they sell fresh vegetables and fruits. So that's produce, produce. So that's pretty funny that if you pronounce it short, long, produce, that means make. But if you pronounce it long, long, produce, that's fruits and vegetables at the store. Okay, now let's take a, uh, let's take a look at the next phrase in the article, which is Defective products can result in recall costs. Defective products can result in recall costs. Defective. Defective. Defect. 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 What do you think about that? Defect. Are those long or short sounds? Defect. Defect. Those are short. What about tiv? Defective. Defective. Or maybe it's all short. I think it's all short. Defective. Defective. Yeah, those are all short sounds. Defective. Defective. Okay, let's take a look at the next word. Products. Products. Prada. 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 Those are both short. Pra. Da. Products. Defective products. That's short, 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 short. Defective products. All right, now the word can. Technically, it's long. Can. Can, can, but when in conversation it becomes very short. Can, can, defective products can, defective products can, defective products can. That's very nice pronunciation. If you say defective products can, that's preferable. You should talk like that. That sounds nice. But unfortunately, most people will say defective products can, defective products can result. 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 What do you think about that? Result. Result. Short, long. Short, long. Result. Defective products can result. Defective products can result in. 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 What do you think about that word? In. That's very short. Result in. Result in. Short, long, short. Result in. Result in. Result in. Recall. Recall. Re Do you know what that means? Recall? That's when... Maybe we'll talk about this in a minute. It's coming up. You can see number one and number two below the phrase. But recall, when you say it like that, long, long, recall, recall, that is when a company... Uh, this happens with cars. Imagine a car company sells a car to many people, but all of these cars have one problem. Have you ever seen that before? And the factory, the car company says, oh, please return your car to the factory and we will fix it because it's a big problem. This is a recall, long, 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 long. And my student says, oh, but doesn't that mean memory? Yes, it means memory if you say short, long, recall. Recall. That means remember. Recall. But if you say long, long, recall, recall, 
that means uh, there's a problem with the product and you have to return the product to the company and they will fix it or they will they will give you money or something. So that's kind of a, a funny thing. Okay. Oh, and then for some reason... Oh, okay, this is a new class. All right, so that's the end of one class. And then we're moving on here to uh, a new class. And again, this guy, I would say maybe he's like upper intermediate. And again, we were we were looking at some problems in a book. He's a Turkish guy, and we were talking about Turkish food. And uh, I can't remember the name of the thing because uh, right now it's Ramadan. And I was saying, oh, when Ramadan is finished, will you be, will you eat a lot of food when it finishes? And he says, oh, yes. And I said, what do people usually eat at the end of Ramadan? And he says, well, we miss breakfast. And uh, I can't remember the name of the, the thing. It's like a bread. It's like a bread. Let me see if I can find a picture. It won't be of the thing he said because I can't remember the name of the of the thing that he said, but uh, I can find something similar hopefully. The reason I'm telling you this is because I want to talk about a particular word, but I have to show you a picture in order to do it. Okay, so this is not the bread. I can't remember the name of the bread. I think it started with the word the letter B. But he said, oh, I really love this bread because it has, it's very thin. And, and I knew when he said it's very thin, he didn't know the right word for it. But you see this bread here? You see how uh, it's like you can almost see through part of it. This is what we call flaky bread. Flaky, that word flake. Uh, maybe you know, for example, snowflake. So a, a flake is something very thin. It's not like a very thin layer of something. So flaky bread has like very thin layers of things. Uh, like a like a Napoleon, uh, like the French pastry, the Napoleon I think is very flaky. Or the, the millefui pastry, the French pastry is very flaky. Oh, wait, maybe we can look at that. Let's see. See, this is very, I don't know if you've ever had something like this, but it's extremely flaky. And uh, here, let me show you a disgusting picture. <laughs> Let's look at a disgusting picture. Flaky skin. So here is some <laughs> flaky skin. That's flaky skin. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about that word flaky because we were talking about some kind of Turkish bread or Turkish pastry. Sahid Khan says, hello. Hello, Sahid. How are you doing tonight? Okay, let's go back. Okay. And uh, I think, what was the word? So we were looking at a question in a book, which, oh, we were talking about the word ambitious. Let me write the word ambitious here ambitious. And I said, are you an ambitious person? Because that was the question in the book, ambitious. And he said, no, 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 I'm not ambitious. But I knew that wasn't true. I thought, I don't think he understands the word ambitious. He's a very ambitious person because uh, in Turkey, he was a very professional person. He was a lawyer. And now he's in the United States working as an Uber driver. And uh, to me, that means he's very ambitious because he's uh, he's got some idea in his head and he's working very hard to uh, to to accomplish this idea. And that's what an ambitious person is. An ambitious person wants more, uh, want, is not happy with their situation and tries to change their situation. Uh, so that's ambition. Ambition is 
having big dreams and, and working towards it. And so I said, no, no, I think you are. You are an ambitious person. And he said, no, no, because ambitious means you hurt people, you don't care about people, you do anything to succeed. And I said, no, 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 no. That is ruthless. A ruthless person doesn't care about other people. So for example, a ruthless army or a ruthless manager, this means they will hurt people to succeed. They will do anything to succeed. Ambitious just means you have big dreams and you work really hard for your big dreams. Ambitious is a very positive word. He was thinking about the word ruthless. Ruthless means I don't care about other people. I don't care what happens to other people. I will do anything to make money or to succeed. Okay, uh, I don't know. Okay, let's move on to this interesting phrase here. The phrase get to, get to. Now, uh, people who are studying English are always very <laughs> confused by the word get, because if you look up the word get in the dictionary, you will find uh, many, many definitions. You can use get in many different ways. And here is one way that you can use get to. This must be get to, okay? It's not just get. It's get to plus verb. For example, uh, I asked him, uh, what was something that you enjoyed about being a lawyer? And he said, well, uh, I really enjoyed traveling to many different countries and meeting many interesting people. You can use this phrase, get to, which means I'm very lucky, very happy to have this opportunity. So uh, I got to travel to many different countries. I was very lucky and very happy to have the opportunity to travel uh, to these countries. I got to meet interesting people. I was very fortunate. I was very lucky to meet interesting people. I, I was grateful for the opportunity to meet interesting people. So get to, I guess, is a modal. We were talking about that. Like, it, what is get to? I think it's a modal because it's like have to, have to, need to. It works in the same way. Uh, you, you use that phrase and then you use a verb. And that means I'm very lucky, very happy for this opportunity. Let's see. It was difficult at first. Oh, oh and he said, oh, uh, he was getting confused and he was saying, but is that like, uh, used to, like, get used to, get used to. And I said, no, get used to is like adjusting, becoming comfortable. So, for example, uh, it was difficult at first, but I got used to living in a foreign country. Now I'm comfortable with it. It was difficult. Now I'm comfortable. I got used to. That's different. So I get to travel. I'm lucky to travel. I'm happy to travel. It's great to travel. Compared to, I got used to traveling means I'm comfortable with traveling now. Before I wasn't. Okay, uh, let's see. I hope we will get to go to... Okay, we were talking about Disneyland. I don't want to talk about Disneyland. Okay, now let's move on to a very...